Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm... Quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, 
catch up. Yes, yes. Palazzo Deluso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. If you need something, sir. Welcome to Il Palazzo Deluso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Let's check what they have on offer. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch, our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch, our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce.
Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. Perhaps, in the meantime, you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight, the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood at all. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir... It's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth... Like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. Sherry, I'm over here with my new ursine companion. What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck it. Cordon is even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, uh, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? 
Stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or Craven, from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Can I ask you a question? Of course. Stop me when you've had enough. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find Is this familiar to you? First try. I can't help <laughs> you. Friend. And would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. May I ask for your assistance? Sorry, but I never heard of this. Are you able to help me? Sorry, but I never heard of this. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just Is this familiar to you? Ex excuse me, what? I'm not sure I know. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Sorry, but I never heard of this. Time to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and... Rest is what? Are you able to help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. Not that one, huh? You lost the bet, Sherry, but don't let that stop your search for the Navy officer. Help me, please. I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Help me, please. Ex excuse me, what? I'm not sure I know.
Can you satisfy my curiosity? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I... Could you help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. This isn't working. Can you, you satisfy my curiosity? Time. I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. May I ask you something? I can't help you, friend. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Help me, please. I can't help you, friend. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, but I've never heard of it. Pardon, monsieur. But I am not in the mood to talk. Someone left their cane at my table. I suspect you will want it back. My apologies, sir, but I wouldn't know how to identify its owner. Hmm. So the simplest option ended in failure. That's irritating. No, what is irritating is you trying to break the rules of my game, Sherry. Don't be so lazy.
Help me, please. Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. May I ask for your assistance? I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Excuse me, just one question. Sorry, but I've never heard of it. Is this familiar to you? I can't help you with that, sir. Could you help me? I can't help you with that, sir. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. Do you know anything about this? I can't help you, friend. Are you able to help me? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. anything about this I would help you if I knew sir may I ask you something I would help you if I knew sir time to check your who what and what cherry who are you asking About what and dressed as what? I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. Pardon, Monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk.
Bacchus would find this place incredibly dull, don't you think? Do you know anything about this? I would never refuse a nobleman, but I know nothing, sir. Help me, please. Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people? Can I ask you a question? Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you, friend. Are you able to help me? I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer.
Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Are you able to help me? I can't help you with that, sir. Could you help me? Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Can I ask you a question? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this. Would you like a drink, sir? Would you like a drink, sir? May I ask you something? I can't help you with that, sir. Are you able to help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. Help me, please. You sure you oh, know? Oh, I'm sorry, you but that's beyond my knowledge. Help me, please. My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. Do you know anything about this? I'm sorry, but I've never heard of that. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221.
excuse me, just one question. Uh, don't take it personally, sir. Uh, but I know nothing about this. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey, boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom-made... A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner?
Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything. I was after a British noble who takes boxing lessons but suffers from some liver issues. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Well, you're half correct. I am indeed Lord Andrew Craven. Your other guesses were wrong. But you still have the edge over that blasted medium. Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Mm -hmm.